Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about an awesome .NET library called Flow. Now, this is an HTTP client library, and I only heard about this fairly recently because I was involved in an interview and the candidate, it was a technical interview, and the candidate used this, and it was like, mind blown. So I thought I'd do a quick demo of it. And so basically it's got, it's got a really nice fluent syntax for the HTTP client. But for me, the killer feature is that the testing, like we all know that testing HTTP client is quite a pain. This makes it really easy. So let's have a look. So this is the website. It's got examples of the code and the test, but I'm going to demo this anyway. So I've created a ASP.NET web API project. It's got a controller with one action that is my controller with one action. My service get something. The service doesn't do anything at the moment. There was an exception. We'll implement this in a sec. And something is just a DTO. Because obviously it, it's an HTTP client library. So we need to call um, a downstream service or something. Then I'm just using, oh, zoomed in too much. I'm just using this website, which is basically free fake API testing. So it's basically just an endpoint. I'm using this URL and it's going to return some JSON. So it's a, a downstream service, which returns this JSON. It's, it's simple enough for this example. So let's, first of all, let's just do this using HTTP client. Very easy. You inject in HTTP client, HTTP client, add it as a backing field, standard dependency injection, then we can use it. Get from JSON async something. So that was the DTO we saw before. We need to specify that URL. Obviously you'd normally put that in configuration, but this is an example and return it. So that should be it if I run this now. Oh, no, one more. Let me just stop that. Because I need to Add HTTP client. So bear in mind, I'm not using Flurl at the moment. This is just out of the box stuff. And then run this. And if I just use Insomnia and do a request, we can see it's returning it. So it's nice and simple. It just works. Now let's add some tests around it. So I'm going to use Web Application Factory. When using this normally, you would normally override this with a custom, well, your own custom class so you can configure it. But I'm going to keep this simple here. I'm going to create an HTTP client. So if you've not used this before, this is basically ASP.NET Core's way of doing integration tests against APIs. And this will spin up an in memory version of your API, which you can then use this client to do tests against. So I can say like, um, get async. It was called my controller, wasn't it? So I can just do my, oh wait. And let's get a response. And we need to assert it, don't we? So we say, let's say status code should be, and it'd be okay. Um, let's also get the content and assert against the content. Uh, let's just read it as string. Oh, oh, wait. And so let's do content dot should be. I'm going to say blah because I'm going to let it fail so I can copy it out to save me some typing. Don't worry, we are getting to flow very soon. So I'm just going to copy that out. Uh, let's just replace quote for double quote. Um, and do that. So this should pass. 
which it did. So yeah, that's quite simple. So, right, okay, so now can you spot the problem? We are calling a real endpoint, which quite often you don't want to do in your tests. And ATP client is a pain to do this. So there's no IHCP client that you can start mocking things. And even if you could, it's nice to not have to inject in like interfaces and then mock them out. And because this is an integration test after all, so it's not like I'm calling my service directly anyway. So this is where Flow comes in. So let's switch this over to Flow. So if I go to new get, add Flow HTTP, add it to my project. And then I don't need this. I can get rid of all this. Flow adds an extension method to string. So I can then say, you've got a whole bunch of like get, post, put, up, all the stuff. I'm going to do get JSON and I want my something. Uh, that's saying that doesn't need to be. Okay. I'm just going to go with that. Follow the warning and it doesn't need to be nullable. So by default, this will throw an exception for any unhappy path. In fact, if I just run the test, make sure that's actually working. So that's still working. So I've not made many changes. Um, I've got rid of a whole bunch of injection stuff. You've got lots of fluent options, like with header, so you can do that kind of stuff. I can say with bearer token, all that kind of stuff. As I say, by default, this will throw an exception for any non-successful status code. You can explicitly say, allow a particular status code or a list of status codes, or you can say allow any. And then if you do that, you can get the response and have more custom logic. But for this demo, we're just going to do that. So we've seen it already working. Now, the, so I've shown you a bit of the fluent syntax. Now this is where the power comes in. I want to do some testing. I don't want this to call the real thing. So if we go back to the website, we can see that the example here has this using statement, which I'm going to copy into my code. So basically this means that anything inside this block, inside this using statement, Flurl is going to take over any code inside this block, take over what it does in your real code. And it allows you to, in fact, let me change this to a using declaration, which is a bit more modern. So that means the using is just the rest of this block. And we can say HTTP client dot um, responds with new something. Let's give it some, let's say title equals something. Uh, completed, sure, why not? ID equals one, user ID equals two. And so that's now going to take over. Now, a small caveat here, this would work as is if we weren't using Web Application Factory. The way Web Application Factory works is it creates, it creates an in-memory version of your web API to test against, but that runs in a different ex execution context. So what we're going to do is there's just a small option against the web application factory server dot preserve execution context equals true. If you're not using web, web application factory, so like a unit test or whatever, something that's not an integration test like this, then you don't have to do this. It's just if you're using web, web application factory. Now, if I run this, I'm expecting this test to fail because obviously that's what the real endpoint's returning, but we're telling it to return something else. And it has. So if I just copy this out, Oops. 
and it should pass. Now with this you can do a whole bunch of other stuff, so where I've said responds with, this is also quite fluent, so I can say four calls two, and there's you can do URL patterns. There's a bunch of other things like you can you can say allow the real outbound calls for this particular URL. So with this four calls too, you can set up different um, mock scenarios for different endpoints that you're calling. So some might you want to allow the real API call. So let's go. That's fine for now. Another feature we've got is we can do HTTP test dot should have called. And this takes in, oops, this takes in like a wildcard star. So what I can do is I can just take the end of this lot and say, I'm expecting this to call that. And I can say times one, so it should only call it once. So if, for example, if I just come back to my code, imagine this was, oh, blah, whatever, let's put it on the same line. Let's, imagine it's been called twice. Then, <clears throat> oops, that needs to await. So there's that. So imagine this has been called twice. So obviously it's not changing what this is methods doing it's just calling it multiple times when there's no point but by running the test we've now caught that so you can see this is like a really really powerful library which makes making http requests and also testing it or testing your code that uses it and mocking different scenarios really really easy so so this is on GitHub, and if you like, if you like it, just to show the author your appreciation, because it is a really awesome library. And likewise, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe the video. And if you can help me spread the word on social media, that'd be amazing, just to get a bit of, bit of extra reach. So, okay, see you next time.